music. That is our theme song. That is super exciting. Valerie, we're here, kid. We did it. Woo! This is Pals. Welcome to Pals. I am Tommy D. I call myself the nonprofit sector connector. I'm jazzed about this show. Valerie and I, I look, this is all you, Valerie Heffron. You came up with this idea. We'll talk about where it came from. But look, this show, Professionals and Animal Lovers show, which is, this is the first episode. It is September 1st. 2021 and we are live facebook talking alternative broadcasting you can always find us there and live on talkradio.nyc now i heard my voice crack a little and i'm always ready man but maybe i'm a little anxious today this is episode one it is episode one all right here's what i want to tell you all first so so you understand what our show is about i'm going to read from the script because it's the first show so we want to amplify the message that the bond between animal lovers is incredibly strong we want to support one another in business, and by building a compassionate network together, everyone wins, especially the animals. We'll achieve this through creating a community and hosting this weekly program that will spotlight professionals who are animal lovers and the nonprofits that are focused on protecting, sheltering, and advocating for these animals. At this point, I'm going to introduce my buddy, my comrade, my friend, my pal, Val, Valerie Heffron. I'm coming to you from my attic on Long Island to wherever you are in the Southeast of this country. What's up, man? What's going on? Just really thrilled to be here. Um, of course, I've got my buddy, my best friend. This is Jovi. Jovi. My hey, Jovi. The OG. <laughs> Who did you name him after? Bon Jovi. Oh, John Bon Jovi. Okay. Yeah, actually, I've been trying to... Um, I've been trying to kind of make the case for why we should get another dog to name it Bon Bon. So then we have Bon Bon Jovi. Just saying. Um, I, I'll find any reason to get another animal. <laughs> <laughs> so you're, um, you're an animal lover, Val, right? Huge. Yeah, yeah huge. Um, I actually just want to, before I forget, I need to mention that. Um, so our new company, Work Be Done, is proudly co-sponsoring this um, podcast. And we do donate 10% of net profits to local shelters, rescue, reputable rescues. That's an important distinct distinction. I know you guys know what I'm talking about and um, other advocacy groups. So, you know, look, I, I, don't, I don't know how everyone else got involved with animals. I was raised an animal lover. You know, my dad was probably the biggest animal lover to date that I've ever met. He had me join the Audubon Society by the time I was like in third grade. And, you know, other kids were doing like stuff with their parents. Uh, let, let's say they were going to, you know, games, you know, baseball games or whatever. My dad was having me sit home and like listen to borrowed records from the library to learn the different types of bird songs, like to identify the difference between like an Oriole and a, and a Cardinal and a parakeet you know, it was like all those wild parakeets you got to be careful kind of weird like, yeah well we ended up getting parakeets but anyway you know little little not common but that's okay because you know we really grew this level of compassion in me for animals that i don't i don't know if i would have had that or not naturally you know nurture is a big part of it um but anyway i have met some phenomenal people through animal advocacy and some of my closest friends I've met through a protest or something. And um, before I uh, really get lost in my history, I want to mention that um, I actually met Reno at an animal protest, a, a puppy mill, an anti-puppy mill demonstration. Um, and I really think that's important because Rena, I just want to let you know that we have some people already interested in following this um, subject. And uh, right. someone, someone here locally to me was like, Reno's good looking. What a cute guy. And knowing <laughs> you're an animal lover and she's single, she's like, oh boy. Is, he single? is he single? We, we should go get some pizza. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah. All right, we're gonna now we're coming. We're coming. Look at this, Val. I thought look, you were blushing. Kidding. I'm blushing. You're blushing. <laughs> you weren't kidding about creating community, man. You're not kidding with this whole thing. I'm all about it. But we all see that's the thing. Knowing that he's an animal lover, she was instantly like, Who's this guy? You know what I mean? Because it is a true bond. And that's why we wanted to bring this together. Um, because 
animal lovers want to support other animal lovers in so many ways, donations, sharing events, attending things, going to protests. And uh, I really, I don't want to take too much away. I want to, uh, of time, I, I really want Reno to get into his story because it's one of the most riveting um, and, and appalling stories I've ever heard. So the name of our episode today is Puppy Mill Thugs. And I think we should get started with wow. the of Joanne's Gourmet Pizza, Reno it's Deep. Quite fitting. It's quite a fitting name. Um, Valerie, I met you in front of Pups for Love, mm -hmm. uh, which I might say that literally one month to the one year to the week of me getting beat up in their parking lot, we had that store closed down. So, which is a miracle, one, right? One year. It was literally the same by that happened in January. And the next January, they were closed down. Um, wow. You know, I, I met you at that protest, Val, and that protest was uh, feeding off of an unfortunate event that happened to me mm -hmm. uh, in, in that I had been going to this dry cleaners forever, for 20 years, the laundromat to get my clothes done. Don't anyone come down on me. I don't wash my own clothes. Um, <laughs> so I do the wash and fold. Um, Smart. <laughs> and, and I pulled up this one day and I saw two vans. And I saw, now, now granted, those vans probably most definitely had been there in the past. Maybe I just didn't catch them that time. But I saw Missouri and Arkansas plates. And I was like, holy crap, these are puppy mill vans right here, feeding the store puppies. Yeah. Um, so I did naturally what's in me and that's pushed the envelope a little bit. And I started videoing from my car. And the uh, guy walked over to my car, the guy who was driving one of the vans, you know, put that effing camera down. And I was like, no. Um, then the sleazy old owner came out um, and he made some sleazy comments. And I still wasn't going to take the camera down. I wanted to expose this. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so, you know, within a matter of a couple minutes, there's two guys pulling me out of my truck. And, and you know, it, it, was, it was a roll. It was, let's roll. And we were fighting. Um, so hold, on, hold on one second. Hang on one second. Uh, this is, was the owner one of the people that was that assaulted you? No, the owner was not one of the people that assaulted me. The owner okay. was the man who instigated okay. the van drivers to assault me. I okay. mean, I saw him, he pulled them aside and mentioned something to them. And then they came at my truck and started and pulled me out and started giving me a beat down. You know, um, let, me ask, let me ask you a quick question, you know, because for, <laughs> for, for, for you three, Regina, yourself and Valerie, you guys are very in tune to this community and what goes on. But I'm going to be honest, this is going to be this whole uh, show is going to be a learning experience. I don't mean today. I mean, every week for me, somebody who's outside of this, uh, this advocacy world and just not aware of it. So share with me, like, what, what, what did you see that you knew that this was something, something was, was awry, you know, with the white okay. place or what set, set the stage so people who might not be as Got it. in. Got it. So I pulled up and normally I would just get out of my car and bring my laundry in. And this day I pulled up to two white vans parallel parked along the building and when i saw those license plates now okay so i'm pulling into a parking lot of a puppy store and then i'm seeing two white vans <clears throat> with the license plate missouri and arkansas now i know those are big puppy mill states um so i knew what they were they didn't have to bs me uh i knew exactly what they were so i started filming and um, to, to their, they got very, very defensive. Um, obviously they knew what was inside their vans better than what I knew. I didn't get up to the vans yet. I was just videoing from the outside, right. hoping I would catch them bringing some dogs out. Hey, Tommy, I, I'm sorry to interrupt. You have to realize, and this is for the rest of the world too, that these, the pet stores, that sell puppies and kittens and rabbits 
they perpetuate stories that are not true, that they don't bring in animals from puppy mills. They don't support puppy mills. They don't buy from puppy mills. So this is an important moment. And that's why they right. didn't film it. Right. So it was a big moment. It was can a- I, yeah. Can I just interject? Yeah. For those of you who don't <laughs> understand what the puppy mill situation is, there are approximately 10,000 registered puppy mills in the U.S., This does not include puppy mills that are not registered and backyard breeders. There are about 168,000 breeding dogs in facilities licensed by the USDA. A staggering 2.4 million puppies are produced by licensed and unlicensed puppy mills and are sold each year. Most are sold to brokers for 50 to 150 then marked up into the thousands at pet shops. Now, I'm just going to continue really quickly. Animals and puppy mills are treated like cash crops. They are confined to squalid, overcrowded cages with minimal shelter from extreme weather and no choice but to sit and sleep in their own excrement. Animals suffer from malnutrition or starvation due to inadequate and unsanitary food and water. Sick or dying animals receive little or no veterinary care. Adult animals are continuously bred until they can no longer produce, then destroyed or discarded. So literally in a dumpster, in a dumpster, in a garbage bag, just thrown out. Or they shoot them used and then dumped. And that's why what Reno is talking about and the puppy mill to uh, 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 store chain needs to be destroyed. So, so Regina, if I can ask you, so you guys see that and you know that and you're aware that's Regina Mendoza, Happy Tales NYC, uh, Camp Happy Tales NYC, who's our other guest here today. Regina, so wh- again, I'm naive to a lot of this. I am. And I, I, I bet a lot of our listeners are because if they're if they're not already part of this community, then they're just not aware. So a puppy mill obviously sounds tragic, but tell I, I mean, is it just they're they're forced to reproduce? Is that what's going on? So puppy mills are usually just big, huge farms or sheds, if you will. And they're um, like crates and crates and crates and crates and crates stacked one on top of each other. Um, They don't even have pans underneath them. So a lot of these dogs don't even have like ground to stand on and their waste and their excrement just goes down into the dogs underneath them. They're not vaccinated. They are not cared for. They're they're not groomed. They're not groomed. And it sounds like if there's and it sounds like this sorry to cut you there. It sounds like they're standing on the bottom of the cage. You're saying there's no flat, there's nothing correct. They're not even they're never on easy on solid ground. Right. And so some of these in the mesh. In the mesh, yeah. Right. The wire. They're all there on wire grading. And it's horrible. It's a horrible Some of them way. never touch the ground. Some of them have right. never felt grass under their feet. And you know no. what? You don't even know if they're inbreeding or not. So let me just jump in real quick because we, we do have to go to break shortly, but I just want to let you know that what's sad about this is that the puppy mills, uh, the pet stores are able to perpetuate this, this farce. And they say, you know, all of our dogs come from USDA approved facilities. That's the problem. Those are- What a joke. We're going to go to break. And when we come back, we're going to let Reno finish this crazy true story. Are you a business owner? Do you want to be a business owner? Do you work with business owners? Hi, I'm Stephen Fry, your small and medium-sized business or SMB guy. And I'm the host of the new show, Always Friday. While I love to have fun on my show, we take those Friday feelings of freedom and clarity to discuss popular topics in the minds of SMBs today. Please join me and my various special guests on Friday at 11 a.m. on talkradio.nyc. Are you a conscious co-creator? Are you on a quest to raise your vibration and your consciousness? I'm Sam Leibowitz, your Conscious Consultant. And on my show, The Conscious Consultant Hour, Awakening Humanity, we will touch upon all these topics and more. Listen live at our new time on Thursdays at 12 noon Eastern Time. That's The Conscious Consultant Hour, Awakening Humanity, Thursdays, 12 noon on talkradio.nyc. Are you interested in having a better relationship with yourself, others, and God? 
Greetings. I'm your host, Dr. George Ann Dow, for the show, A Journey Through into Awareness. On my show, we journey into the awareness that the mind of God is the true seat of our personal consciousness. We join together each Monday at 7 p.m. So tune in on Talk Radio NYC. You're listening to Talk Radio NYC. Uplift, educate, empower. Yep. Um, hi, everybody. Reminder to our guests to unmute themselves. And uh, we are picking it up from not only the definition and examples of what a puppy mill is, but uh -huh. I, as Regina, it's so impactful about what Reno did, the guts it took to keep <laughs> with his camera. And then go ahead, Reno. Um, so the two guys pulled me out of my van. Uh, I had some wrestling history and background, so I was doing okay against the two guys. Thank um, God. And when the third guy got out of the van and he came running and he basically punted me, kicked me in the ribs. When I went over from that, that's when it was no holds barred. They just beat the hell out of me. Um, you know, they got me down and, and really did a number on me. Um, I did get back up to keep trying to defend myself. And then they just were backing off. So it was a nightmare. There was not one single person in the parking lot, aside from the owner of the pet store and a couple employees of the pet store. Um, what did they do? They encouraged the fighting. And they said, break his phone, steal his phone, uh, you know, get his phone, beat the shit out of this guy. You know, I don't know if I can curse or not. Um, and uh, yeah, they they encouraged it. So it was, uh, it, it was. See it that happened. right there is so grotesque to me because even if you are the owner of this pet store and in your mind, you are compliant with the laws and therefore not doing anything wrong, who stands by and just watches somebody be outnumbered and physically assaulted and encourage it? And that's another reason why I use the word thug on this issue, because a lot yeah. of people don't realize it is a group of thugs that start at the puppy mills themselves. You've got to be yep. a real heartless person to be yep. able to allow animals to live like that. Companion animals. Yep. Well, one, one of the things that I did say as I was taping and I'm holding the camera and I'm videoing and the guy keeps coming over me to try to swat it out of my hands. And I kept saying, if you're not doing anything wrong, why do you have a problem with me getting this video footage? What's right. the problem? Right. And it, it, that seemed to entice him even more. It made him mm -hmm. angrier and angrier. Um, so, you know, once they did their beating on me, one of them got up and got in the van and pulled away. The other guy, I blocked his truck his van with my car so wow. the cops got there they locked one of them up Smart. um and uh you know what at the end of the day the sad part is it's really just going to be like a slap on the wrist you know that's that's it's really not much going to come out of this whole thing which is sad and i would take i would take that beating seven days a week if i knew with each beating i could close a puppy store i'd do it again i know you would I know you would, Reno. And I thank you for that. I, I, and I, this is another reason why, you know, what Regina was touching on before is that there is this pipeline. So for example, these guys, they didn't even work at the store. And they don't even work nope. at the puppy mills. These guys are transporters, all these yep. other drivers. But if you look at the, the types of people, the mentalities of the personas that they employ, to keep this ring going where they can take abused animals, sell and broker them for cheap and get paid to drive across the country to do it. I mean, it, it's a sad state of affairs, but, yeah. but 
on a on a high note that that store at least is closed and this is where i need to mention something about the anti puppy mill bill the anti puppy mill bill has been gradually making its way it's progressed through the years and it's little by little by little little by little little, right so a couple of years ago it finally was co-sponsored by an assembly woman and a senator and it made it through the assembly and then this year it made it on to out of senate into committee that transferred from one committee to another committee and now we wait until the next session where hopefully it will pass the senate floor so we you know part of this message is and, and this is if you notice i'm not mentioning parties okay because i believe very strongly that animal welfare is not a right or wrong issue <clears throat> it's excuse me it's not a left or right issue it's a right or wrong issue so what we need people to do is is get involved on both sides of the aisle, all sides or no party, and just stand for what's right. These anti-puppy mill bills need to pass. They've passed in other states. Illinois was the most recent as of last week. This has to yeah. end. This Valerie, has- how do how do our listeners, how do the people that are plugging in, whether they're here live listening in on Facebook or talk radio, or you know, our show is going to be on podcast platforms. So if somebody finds this down the road. How do they find out about these bills? Where do they go? Is there a website? Is there a certain, what's the yeah. issue? Um, honestly, on this specific issue, and everyone can chime in if they have a different resource, but um, I believe that the, the best thing to do is if you're on Facebook, go to Puppy Mill Free NY. That's Puppy Mill Free New York, because this particular bill is going through the New York process right now. Um, and, and, or if you're just going to Google something, you can Google, um, puppy mill bill and why. So, you know, this will bring you up with everything, the history, it will help you find your, um, assembly person, because again, right now the bill is an assembly. So if you want to reach out specifically as a constituent to your assembly person, that's a great thing to do. Um, and you can also get involved, you know, I mean, there's so many groups that are out there. Again, I met Reno at an anti-puppy mill demonstration because of activist groups. There's a great uh, nationwide resource called United Against Puppy Mills. Um, you know, anyway, those are, those are my suggestions. Um, but so Reno, I also have to thank you. I see Reno all the time posting animals for adoption, posting animals that are um, posting fundraisers for charities in need of help and support. And, you know, you do so much every single day. I, I love how much you love the animals. And I think- I try. You, you know, it's, it's a simple matter of pressing a button, sharing something. And, you know, I, I just, you know, every day in the neighborhood here when I see a lost dog, and then you see, just last week, My neighbor found a dog in the street. She brought it to my house. I went on Facebook. I had, I kept a little puppy. The dog might've been no joke, 18 to 20 years old, completely cataracted, blind, deaf, no teeth. And this poor little, little uh, pup came to get brought to my house. And I went on Facebook and, and within an hour we found this owner. Like it's just oh, that so. little sharing, that that yeah. one share, you know, you don't realize the reach that it extends to. Yeah. And 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 Facebook, I mean, I just can't, you know, look, it's done some good, it's done some bad with certain things, but in mm-hmm. the animal rescue world, it's really opened some eyes. It really it's really priceless. Is. Yeah. Priceless. I you. Yeah. Now, on, that, on, on that note, as, as far as Facebook goes, I do want to just kind of acknowledge, since we're talking about Facebook, there are a lot of folks checking in on the Facebook, which is super exciting. Some guy named Barry Heffron, he's saying, uh, doesn't Val look beautiful today? So shout out, Dr. Be well. What's up, Barry? How you doing? Uh, Christine Kathleen says hello. And then Regina, uh, Juliet Oppenheimer is telling us, thanks for explaining how these dogs live in these puppy mills and the horrible situation. Thanks for checking in, Juliet. And uh, Alan, uh, Jasmine is also checking in, so appreciate that. What about you guys? Where are the Facebook groups to your earlier point, Reno? Because again, I'm not the guy who knows to find these groups. So where are the communities on Facebook if somebody wants to learn more about animal advocacy, just kind of straight up or 
or that group, where did you post? Did you put that, that loss? Okay. Post? Like, where do you so go? When, so when you find a dog, uh, and this is a local situation, most neighborhoods have a moms and dads page. In this neighborhood, I posted it on the Roslyn moms and dads, the Glenwood Landing moms and dads, the Glen Cove moms and dads. So I hit like five or six moms and dads pages and it, literally, lo and behold, within an hour, you know, oh, that's my neighbor's dog. Boom, boom. And I, I, I delivered the dog, you know, and I found, I, I made sure I asked some questions um, when I got the owner on the phone. Finally, I wanted to know who, you know, I needed them to answer a few particular questions that only the owner could answer. Cause I, mm -hmm. you know, I, I was not gonna let the dog just go into the hands of a stranger. So I got some answers there and uh, it all worked out well for this dog. You know, some, yeah. some of them, it doesn't work out well, but gosh, I'm telling you, Facebook really saves a lot of animals. Really awesome. It does. It does. And to your point, Reno, because I know, look, you're a busy business owner, you know, you're running a restaurant, you do a bunch of other things. And the truth is that there's so many ways, for example, let's, let's go to the flip side of a transporter. If someone wants to be a transporter for a rescue, you know, I know there are rescues that are even out of state and sometimes the perfect owner lives in, you know, Vermont or something like that. And there are people who volunteer their time, their car, and they'll transport a dog, a cat to their new owners. So that's a needed thing. Or like he's talking about, you can just, you can share stuff. You can be a cross poster and literally just deliver yeah messages to all different platforms and all different um you know areas in the country so we can always do more right yep. hence the show hence the show <laughs> yep um so i believe actually i just want to double check how much until our our next break we're going to take a break in about two minutes Val. But two minutes yeah. perfect okay you got, you got reno, a question for reno um, I wanted to actually let him introduce Regina because Regina, you should hear how he spoke about you and your rescue when I was like, Hey, what rescue would you like to have on board with you? So Reno, why don't you take it away and introduce your buddy, Regina Mendoza? Absolutely. I, I met Regina through a dear friend of mine, Marcy Mainzer and Marcy, um, volunteers over at Regina's, uh, rescue group. And we actually rescued a puppy from there for my daughter uh, last year. But uh, when I got the opportunity to go over there and to see how this woman so selflessly, I mean, she does this in her home. So it's her life. You know, when you're doing something in your home, it just becomes your life. Yeah. And Regina dedicates her whole life to this you know not going on vacations every year like other people do she grabs a dinner here and there when she can if she's got the right volunteers at the shelter uh, at the rescue um but i met her through like i said when i went there i saw Dina runs it very militantly and that militantly was, yeah, militantly like like the, when 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 the time comes for the dogs to switch from outdoors to indoors, Regina is going on a 10, 9, 8, 7, you know, down to one count. And the volunteers are hustling. It's literally militant. And I, love it. I believe this is the way that you prevent any mishaps, you prevent any bites. Right, he's breaking up a little bit now. Reno, I'm really sorry to cut you off. I think we're, we're you're freezing up for a second, but that's okay. We're going to go to commercial break. We're going to fix it, and then we're going to be back with Regina Mendoza of Camp Happy Tales NYC. Thank you. Hey, Joseph Franklin McElroy, host of the new podcast, Gateway to the Smokies. It airs on talkradio.nyc every Tuesday night from 6 p.m. to 7. Every episode is dedicated to memorable experiences in the Great Smoky Mountains National Park and surrounding areas. This show features experts and locals who expound upon the richness of culture, history, and adventure that awaits you in the Smokies. Tune in every Tuesday from 6 p.m. to 7 on talkradio.nyc. 
Are you a cannabis enthusiast, a cannabis professional, or interested in entering the cannabis space? I'm Johnny Tsunami, and this is Planet Baco Lolo, a less taboo view. On our show, we will discuss the cannabis world through the perspective of various cannabis professionals. Tune in every Thursday evening, Eastern Standard Time, 6 p.m. on Radio NYC, Planet Baco Lolo, a less taboo view. Are you passionate about the conversation around racism? Hi, I'm Reverend Dr. TLC, host of the Dismantle Racism Show, which airs every Thursday at 11 a.m. Eastern on talkradio.nyc. Join me and my amazing guests as we discuss ways to uncover, dismantle, and eradicate racism. That's Thursdays at 11 o'clock a.m. on talkradio.nyc. Are you a small business trying to navigate the COVID-19 related employment laws? Hello, I'm Eric Sauber, employment law business law attorney and host of the new radio show, Employment Law Today. On my show, we'll have guests to discuss the common employment law challenges business owners are facing during these trying times. Tune in on Tuesday evenings from 5 p.m. to 6 p.m. Eastern time on talkradio.nyc. You're listening to Talk Radio NYC at www.talkradio.nyc. Now broadcasting 24 hours a day. We're back. Sorry about that, guys. Uh, Reno, I think you're back now, but we yep. got, we definitely got it. Like, so in other words, Regina is like a sergeant, but you know, something else that is definitely worth bringing to light is that, um, and this is a, just an unfortunate occurrence that does happen at other like shelters and rescues is that volunteers or people that are uh, um, in charge of the animals, they'll have favorites. They'll have their favorites it's quite common to bond with a specific animal, but sometimes what happens is the less popular ones, if you will, or the ones that haven't bonded with a specific person will not get the same amount of, of exercise or attention, it, treats, you know, enrichment toys, et cetera. So running a system like that is, I feel not only imperative, but brilliant. Um, so without any further ado, I want to, get her her talking time um, and thank you for all of the great work that you do, Regina. And uh, I want you to take it away. Tell us how you get started. Tell us what you do. Show us your beautiful backyard, whatever <laughs> you want to share with us. <laughs> okay, so I just, before um, I get into why I started, I just want to tell everybody what the real problem is here. Um, aside from, of course, the problem of the puppy mills, each year approximately 1.5 million shelter animals are euthanized. That's an average of about 670,000 dogs and 860,000 cats. This does not include the tens of thousands of dogs that are living on the streets, dogs that are in fighting rings, dogs that are used as bait dogs, dogs in hoarding situations, dogs chained up in yards without proper food, water, or shelter, dogs in homes being neglected, abused, and even raped by their humans. I know it's disgusting and I know it happens and it is horrific. So one day I'm on Facebook and I'm reading this story about how they are euthanizing all of these dogs in shelters. And one of these dogs is a pregnant mama dog. And all she wants to do is protect her unborn babies. And she's in this noisy, crowded, cold shelter. She doesn't have a quiet place. She doesn't have anything to nest on or nest in. And one day they're pulling her out of her kennel. They're holding her down and she is terrified and she knows something bad is going to happen. At that point, they take what's called a heart stick. And for those of you out there who don't know what that is, that is a syringe with a big thick needle. They hold her down and they drive it through her chest wall which is highly innervated. So she is feeling every bit of that pain 
terror, and fear. They then inject the sodium pentothal into her heart, which burns like hell, and then she dies a barbaric, painful death. There is no time, no funding, no resources, no staff to give that mama dog um, some something to help her relax, something to help her sleep, something, you know, taking the time to love her. And so she doesn't leave this earth feeling love, feeling that she cared, feeling that she mattered. And also she's feeling like she failed at protecting her unborn babies. At that point, she is now discarded like yesterday's trash and it is over. So as a mother, as a person who loves animals, I cried and cried and cried for about three days straight. Yeah. And then I walked into the gym and I ran into one of the uh, trainers and instructors, Pam Palestino, who I knew was a rescue advocate, an advocate for dogs, um, pities in general. I knew she volunteered and I came to her crying and I said, this is what I read. And she said, it's true. And I said, I have to do something because if I'm not part of the solution, then I'm part of the problem. Yeah. And she said, okay, you need to start volunteering. And that's what I did. I started volunteering. I started doing transport. As you said, Val, I started doing home checks. I started um, walking dogs that other rescues had in boarding, either in vets offices or in boarding facilities. And then one day I said, I need to foster a dog. Why is this cute little dog sitting in a vet's office in boarding? Let me take this dog home and foster. And that became foster number one. His name is Baloney. That was about in 2014. I uh, had him for about six weeks. And on the day that I had to transport him to his adopter, I was a mess. Yep. I was sobbing. Yep. So, like by the time I handed him over to his adopter, I had mucus pouring from everywhere, doing the ugly cry. <laughs> Like, <laughs> and she's like, it's fine. Okay. So it's one of the hardest things. Yeah, to do. it became a, so understanding the circle yeah. of foster life. You know, you bring yeah. them in, you care for them until you find they're just right for every family. Then yeah. you hand them over and then you open the door for another. And then yes. it became one other and then it became two puppies and then it became three puppies and then it became six puppies and one day I blinked and I had 28 dogs in my house <laughs> so things yes. had to change you know like I had a backyard that had dirt and grass and trees and a swing set for my daughter and mm -hmm. that became a mud pit and it became dig holes and it became unsanitary and so little by little we had to totally reevaluate how we live in this house and how we live with rescue in this house. What part of my home do I want to claim for myself? And what part of my home do I want to give to rescue? Because it mm -hmm. is all consuming and all encompassing. Oh, mm -hmm. by the way, I do want to say hi to my friend, Tanya Dybel of Joey's Paw. Baby yes. was, was one of my rescues, one of my fosters. Um, he tragically had his rear paws chopped off and was left to die on the side of a road. He was rescued and then eventually brought to camp. Uh, we cared for him. We brought him to rehab therapy. We got him fitted for prosthetics. And then wonderful Tanya and her husband, Charlie, um, who only adopt and take in dogs with special needs, adopted baby Joey. And uh, Tanya went on to start her own foundation called Joey's Paw. PAW stands for Prosthetics and Wheels. And Tanya, um, along with Reno, is one of my favorite people. She is one of the people with so much integrity. She says, I want to do something. This is what I want to do. And yeah. I blink and it's done. And I, I understand that Tanya is going to be um, a guest on one of your future shows. So, yes. hey, Tanya, thank you for, uh, for tuning in. Tanya. Hi, Tanya. Oh, I know. With Tanya, right? Have we scheduled with Tanya yet or else we're Tanya? We we're have scheduled. We have. Yes. Good. Good. We Good. have scheduled for uh, late, later October. I think it's the 27th ish or something. 
and uh, I cannot wait. But um, I actually wanted to just get back to the foster, um, the fostering thing, Regina, because um, a lot of people may not know or understand that um, there there are foster based rescues. Right. Um, which I think primarily is what you are, Regina. Correct. Uh, right. And the only difference that's... is foster based rescues usually foster out. Mm -hmm. I foster every single dog in home. Right. And that's incredible. I mean, the, honestly, foster base is my favorite kind of rescue because you're really giving the dog a sense of home and, and a home environment as opposed to like a kennel environment. And, you know, they tend to really flourish and get comfortable around people and other dogs. And it's a beautiful win-win for everybody usually. Um, so Regina, I have to ask you to show us your beautiful grounds because we have okay. a peak before. But I've seen many rescues and I, this one is impressive. This is impressive. Okay, <laughs> let's see. Oh, let's see it if I can do this. It is spotless I, like the surgical room. I love it. So, you know, okay. while you're walking around, I'm just going to read off your website really quick so people know what's going on so you can get okay. yourself situated. So Camp Happy Tales nyc.com is where you're going to find this or this organization's a 501c3 foster home sanctuary for rescue puppies and that's what we're seeing right now and they give these puppies their best life 234 you forced 234 right regina so far to date take it away so here we go we have I, can you see guys is this a good yep. it's a great view Okay, so right now there is uh, Javon. She is actually our supervisor of camp operations and <laughs> she's playing with Bonnie and Ace. Bonnie was um, actually found in Jamaica, New York, wandering the streets and a cat rescuer happened to find her um, and then reach out to um, uh, Bonnie Clapper, who is actually our... Um, our attorney and she reached out to me and said, you need to take this dog. So she was brought to camp late at night and she's been here since May. Um, Ace, who is playing tug with Javon, he was brought to us uh, about a year or so ago and he has idiopathic epilepsy. So here at camp, we don't just take dogs that are easily adoptable. We take dogs of any breed, any size, and also with special needs. I believe Eddie Milo, who is our wheelchair boy, he's at paralyzed, he's out on a walk. And Blondie, the one that's laying in the grass there, can you guys see her? Yes, we yeah. see her. So Blondie was um, owned by a woman who became ill and then died last November. And then mm. her son was caring for her and he was abusing her. So oh. the uh, extended family brought oh. Blondie to me and she was truly shut down. She was extremely overweight. She um, has five mammary tumors. Um, we've had her spayed and we've removed two of the mammary tumors and she's scheduled for the end of the month to have the other three removed. Um, Ace, like wow. I said over there, he has idiopathic epilepsy and he um, is on three different meds uh, three times a day. And when he has a seizure, he needs to be hospitalized because his seizures tend to cluster and he needs to be hospitalized with our neurologist in New Jersey um, to break the seizure cycle. So here's our yard and um, we have a couple of smaller puppies in the back pen. So we don't- How many pets. How many can you have? How many puppies can you have at the camp at any given time? How many? Well, dogs? like I said earlier, I've had as many as 28, but currently that's a real push. I try not to have more than 20 um, combined puppies, adult dogs, small dogs. Um, we, we only rescue dogs. A lot of people reach out to me for cats, but we don't do cats. Because... And you're in Queens. So those of us who know Queens, right? You're in Queens, correct me if yep. I'm wrong. I'm in, so I'm those of us Russia. who know Queens, it's probably a, a, not a big piece of dirt that you got all these dogs running around on, I'm assuming, right? It's not big at all, but we make it work. So our dogs, what makes us different from shelters, our dogs are out from eight in the morning to 11 in the morning. They go in for a two hour nap. They come back out together to play from one to four. 
they go in for a three hour nap and then they're back out again from seven at night to 10 at night. While they are out here, we have one staff member always supervising and then we have another staff member or volunteer walking them around the neighborhood or going inside to do inside cleanup, dishes, laundry, crates, so that every time these dogs go back inside, their crates are freshly made and they always have a nice treat waiting for them. So think of a nice hotel with a, like with a five a star. Bag. Sounds like a five star hotel, Virginia. You it know, does. I think I want to stay over one day. So, yeah. so yeah. really quick, we got to go to a quick break. So, I, you know, for those of you listening and not watching on Facebook, and I would encourage you to watch on Facebook going forward, gang. But if you're listening, Regina's been showing us the, the camp. But Regina, other than, you know, going to Camp Happy Tales NYC, is there a Facebook? Is there a YouTube? How do they watch? How can they see what we're seeing? Okay, we have a really strong presence on Facebook, Camp Happy Tales NYC. Always add the NYC at the end. Um, <laughs> that's, uh, that's Connie barking, barking, barking. And then we are also on Instagram. So if you're interested in finding a, a dog that is perhaps your new best buddy or your newest family member, please check us out on Facebook or Instagram. That's what's most up to date. And you can check out all our available dogs and pups. Um, you can email me at camphappytailsnyc at gmail.com. Let me know what dog you're interested in and I will send you an application. We are a New York State a recognized 501c3 non for profit organization, and we survive on donations. You can donate through Venmo or PayPal, Camp Happy Tales NYC, or directly through our Facebook page donate link. All right, we're gonna, Regina, just like to keep it there. We're gonna come back and I'll let you, we'll let you wrap up with that information at the end, but thanks for the tour. We're gonna go to a quick break. We're a bit overdue. We'll be back in 90 seconds. Pals, professionals, and animal lovers show. Reno, Regina, Tommy, and Val. We'll be right back. Hey everybody, it's Tommy D, the nonprofit sector connector coming at you from my attic. Each week here on talkradio.nyc, I host a program, Philanthropy in Focus. Nonprofits impact us each and every day, and it's my focus to help them amplify their message and tell their story. Listen each week at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time until 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time right here on talkradio.nyc. <laughs> uninformed about menopause and how it impacts on your life? Hi, I'm Pat Duckworth, women's health strategist and host of the Hot Women Rock radio show, empowering women leaders at menopause. Join me every Thursday at 10 a.m. Eastern time, 3 p.m. UK time on talkradio.nyc for interviews with inspirational women who will share their top tips to rock your world. Have you ever thought of reinventing yourself? Are you looking to create a new life's journey? Hi, I'm Kevin Barbaro, host of Coffee Talk XL every Tuesday night, 5, 8 p.m. Eastern on talkradio.nyc. Tune in live to hear me and my guests from a variety of different backgrounds. As a former college coach and a current full-time actor and owner of multiple companies, my show is as eclectic as my life. That's Coffee Talk XL every Tuesday night, 8 p.m. on talkradio.nyc. You're listening to Talk Radio NYC at www.talkradio.nyc. Now broadcasting 24 hours a day. Welcome back, folks. Love that music. I really love the song we chose. Great. You picked it out. It's like, it's so mellow, it. man. Like, you know, my show on Fridays is like, I'm like bouncing around. It's not down, down, down. And then this is like <laughs> very serene. I feel very mellow. Thanks, Val, for picking that song. It's Tommy D. That's Valerie Heffron. <laughs> oh, oh, is that Blondie? No, who is that now? That's Eddie Milo in the wheelchair. Hi, Eddie Milo. Love Can you see him? I can't tell. Yeah, we can see I him. Love yeah, him. Great. We see him right on with his wheels. Okay. Oh, yep, man. that's Eddie Milo. So he hails from Texas. And wow. in 2016, he was running around, um, leaving his property like he always does and always came back for his meals. But one day he didn't come back. And then oh. his owners found him 
you know, um, unable to use his legs and uh, in a lot of pain. They didn't have the means for vet care, so they held on to him, hoping he would get better on his own. Unfortunately, the first 48 hours in any kind of spinal injury is the most critical in trying to reverse any kind of damage. When he didn't heal on his own, they brought him to a shelter in Texas where he sat hoping to get adopted on the day he was going to be euthanized because honestly, who's going to adopt the oh, Look at him move, you know? He's, moving like, he's so I fast. Know. He is amazing. He truly lives his best life. Oh he is what we call our happiest camper. <laughs> so on the day he was going to be euthanized, they reached out to a rescue who pulled him and brought him to me. And he's been with me ever since. He still goes to rehab therapy at Water for Dogs in the city. We want to make sure that, you know, he doesn't atrophy any further in the back end. And since he uses his front end for everything he does, we want to make sure that that stays loose and supple and doesn't over tighten. Let me tell you something, you know, these stories are, I mean, and there's so many, and especially the one that you told me about with the dog that was pregnant, um, you know, it, it's, it's just endless. And this is the part that I just really want to just get out there. You have to adopt. I know people it's, it's like adopt, don't shop is kind of, you know, it's a trend. It's a great hashtag, but this is why there are so many great animals, whether it's dogs, cats, rabbits, ferrets, turtles, whatever it is, you know, when you pay the retail price, you're more than likely supporting a hideous industry riddled uh, with abuse, cruelty, and neglect. Look at the great care that these beautiful animals are, are you know, thankfully um, receiving. And this is the type of entity, these are the people that you want to support because they care about the animals. You know? And they look how much they sacrificed. I mean, Regina was boasting about the fact that she got to take a day off the other day <laughs> these people it was were all about the whole animals. weekend it was like the best ever yeah so she's averaging a day and a half off a year i mean how many of us <laughs> you know say that it's it's unbelievable and reno <laughs> for all that you do too and i want to also recognize you know reno's pizzeria it's a family business it's been around for like 60 years on camera mm -hmm. Hearing the call from animal lovers, there's there's more and more of a talk about trends. People are becoming vegetarian. People are becoming more plant based, even if they're trying things like Meatless Monday. You know, as a business owner, Reno created a space so that if if you have a vegan friend or family member, that they're not going out to dinner and just basically getting a side salad or a slice of lettuce and tomato. He has an entire vegan menu available in his place of business. These are the kinds of people we really want to support. All right, I'm done. So I got it. So here's the deal. You know, a couple last week we had a conversation. We're going to bring the show to a close. But last week we had a conversation with our friend Regina Mendoza. And I took a video out front of your store last week. Not a bad video. Not like, I, don't beat me up like you got beat up. I was, it was a good video that I took out front of your store. I live, I live in the next town over. We're neighbors. So Regina told me about a pickle slice. What I, it was too early in the morning. It was like 10 o'clock, 10, 15, two days. Nice, Reggie. What's the story? <laughs> tell, me about, tell me about the pickle slice. What's the story? Pickle slice was a challenge. Um, Dean Miller from If You Live Here, Long Island. I know uh, Dean. Dean, cre Dean created a page, If You Live Here, Long Island, and he reaches out to local business owners to uh, give everyone a boost. He asked me to create a pickle pizza. So I contacted a friend of mine who's a, an award-winning chef, and uh, we created something special. It's really fantastic. You have to now, can I, can I, well, I live down the road, literally. I'm a mile or two away from where yeah, you are. You could call so, it in. You could order a personal. No, it's pie. regular. It's usually, it's not like a special. You always have pickles in-house, I guess, for, for that slice. Yeah, but you have to, you can't, we don't do it by a slice. So you yeah. have to get either not a personal a, pie. Okay. Personal size or large size? Yeah. Got it. All right. Well, that... Tommy actually lives with a small country, so but... <laughs> there is a pie. It is fantastic. I will I'm excited. You I'm excited. I think Valerie, when you're back up here on Long Island, the four of us meet for we'll we'll knock off a pickle pie together right there. In... I also got to bring my single friends. Oh, that's true. Pie. That's true. A mitzvah, as they say. I understand, right? Yes. Yes. So, so we're going to draw to close. Reno and then Regina, give us one last thing you want to say before Valerie and I bring it to a close. Reno, you go first. 
Um, you know? I, oh, me or Reno? I didn't, sorry. Ladies first. All right. So listen, if you're not part of the solution, you're part of the problem. What can you do? You can adopt, don't shop, as Valerie had said earlier. You can foster, you can um, donate your time, you can donate. We have Wish List Wednesday every, posted every day on Facebook and on Instagram with our much needed items that uh, we need to run camp. Um, you can donate, like I said earlier, Camp Happy Tales NYC on Venmo, Camp Happy Tales NYC at Gmail on PayPal, or directly through our Facebook page donate link. I just want to say that executives, administrators, and board members of Camp Happy Tales NYC have never and will never take a salary, unlike many of the big rescues that take thousands and thousands and tens of thousands of dollars in salaries. Every dollar that you donate to camp goes to the care of these campers. Awesome. Thank you, Valerie Love and Tommy, it. for Thank having you. me on. Appreciate Thanks. it. Thanks for being here. And I'm threatening you with a day of service, hashtag 60 days of service. My son and I are coming out to do his day of service. We'll talk about that later on. Reno, real quick before Valerie and I take us home. Hey, I can only uh, sum it up by saying, keep on sharing, share, 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 share. If that's the minimum you can do, it's going to wind up working. One of those shares will put you together with the right person to get the right dog to save a life. Thank you guys. We thank appreciate you, you know, thank, you, thank you for what you do, Regina. Thank you for what you do. Val, thank you for being my friend and coming up with this incredible idea of this program. I just want to tell you, we're looking for guests we are looking for sponsors. We're on social media, pals, professional Zam Love Show. We're on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn. We got a YouTube page, TikTok coming soon. I, Reno's dancing. We're both dancing already. I should get you on my show, man. We dance and we sing to my song. Ah, Valerie, take us. What's going on? Well, there's a quote, but also next week's guest. Oh, next week's guest. Everybody tune in, please, for Tina Traster, executive producer of Catnip Nation, an award winning independent documentary film, which I'm actually having, I had a cameo in. The quote we really want to leave you with every week is Tommy DeVisa, take it away. Oh, I'm doing it. The greatness of a nation and its moral progress can be judged by the way its animals are treated. I Amen. Believe that, I believe that was Gandhi. So we'll leave you with Who that. Who said that, Gandhi? Yeah, Gandhi. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Thank you, everyone. Thank Peter you so much. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye, everybody. Thank you. Bye. You're awesome. Bye, Reg. Bye, guys.